Richard Dickel from Pittsburgh Modular, showing off the Voltage Research Laboratory. This is just really designed to be a West Coast, very experimental synthesizer. We called it the Voltage Research Laboratory because that really evokes the idea that you're getting in there and you're digging around and you're finding and you're discovering new things. There's, it's not pre-patched, so you do have to do all the patching to get in there. And the, the modules within the system themselves are really geared towards West Coast experimentation. You have a complex oscillator paired with two function generators and also two dynamics controllers. In addition, we've added an analog delay, so there's a really great bucket brigade analog delay built into the voice board. MIDI with arpeggiator is also there as well, so if you do want to hook it up to a traditional keyboard or hook it up to your DAW, you can certainly do that. The second half of the Voltage Research Laboratory is the touch controller. It's a new module for us as well, again, very influenced by West Coast experimentation and getting in there and trying to do something that's a little bit out of the ordinary. Make sounds that are sort of obtuse and odd, but at the same time creative and very interactive. And I figured for Synthopia we would just talk about two aspects of it, kind of take a little bit of a deeper dive into it. We're going to start with the primary oscillator. The oscillator in the Voltage Lab is something we've been working on for about a year and a half. If I go to a, just a sort of a droning sound here, you'll hear this is a square wave, and square waves are great, we're all a fan. High harmonic, our high harmonic content waves like squares and saws don't really go through wave folders very well. What you end up with is almost a, a phasing effect where they kind of come in and out and they sound kind of weak, it's not terribly interesting. So what we've developed is an analog circuit that allows us to fold the unfoldable. It allows us to take these high um, content waveforms, reshape them while maintaining the timbre and the sound of the waveform, but then create more harmonically rich waveforms. So this is a square wave going through our wave folder here, and you can hear the phasing effect. Now, if I turn on this warp circuit, you can hear You still have all the harmonic content of that square wave, but now it's the wave folder is just chewing it up. So that's the square wave. It also works really well with saw waves. So if we switch to the saw waveform, you can hear wave folder. There's something there that sounds pretty good, but still not quite as rich and as beefy as you would want it to be. So we'll run it through the warp circuit now. Crunchy. Organic. Just sounds huge. So the more harmonics you start with when you run it through that circuit, the richer and the deeper it's going to be coming out the other end. It still works with sine waves and with triangle waves, but you end up with sort of a slightly different version. It doesn't have the deep difference that the higher harmonic waves have. And again, that's a, that's a, a circuit that we developed in-house that really no one's been able to do before. We're really, really proud of that. The next part of this I'd like to talk about, we'll skip over to the Dynamics Controller. Now the Dynamics Controller is a circuit that we've had in our, we had a, the Dynamics Filter Module two or three years ago. Last year we had it, it's part of our Microvolt but we've enhanced it and kind of taken it to the next logical step. So this is, the Dynamics Controller is a low-pass gate. And typically a low-pass gate has this little component called a Vactro in it that gives it this great pluckiness, this great liveliness to it. There's sort of problems 
with Vactrol is in that some are really short and plucky and some are kind of long and tubby. And you're never really sure when you buy a low-pass gate module which one you're gonna get. And you always sort of end up with the one you didn't want. So what we did was say, well, how can we solve this problem? So we went back and we reverse engineered the Vactrol and created an analog circuit that emulates it. So you get that same sound, but you don't have that Vactrol component. What that also allows us to do then is sort of dial in the pluckiness. So we can have a real short plucky. It'll do that real short plucky stuff, but then we can open it up. And that's something that was in the microvolt as well. Okay, so now what we can do with the Dynamics controller is we've added the ability to voltage control that. So what you can do is voltage control the vectoral response of the low pass gate, which again is something we haven't been able to do up until now. We've also added a resident filter to it. Really nice and gummy filter. So you get that natural pluckiness of the low pass gate with this added resident filter and voltage control over the vectoral response itself. So those are two, sort of a little bit of a deeper dive into two innovations that we have in the, the Lifeforms Voltage Lab. The entire unit, the Voltage Research Laboratory, is our new synthesizer, sort of as a unit. But because it's Eurorack, everything is available. You know, this is a Eurorack module. The touch controller is also a Eurorack module. The Voltage Lab synth voice itself will be available in a black box similar to our SV1. So if you're interested in the voice, but not necessarily the full system, that's also an option. We launched on, we launched a Kickstarter for this two days ago. Uh, we were fully funded in nine hours. So the, the response for this has been fantastic. And thank you for everyone that has backed our Kickstarter. So we're just gonna keep plugging away with this over the next 30 days and see how far it goes. The response has been great because it sounds really good. That wave folder is just so big and beefy that it's hard not to get excited when you hear it. The touch controller is a more of a West Coast style touch controller. Again, the whole system is designed for more experimentation. So you have 10 touch pads. Each touch pad has gate control with two dedicated CV outputs, so you have zero to five volts on each one, unquantized, and then you also have a Y-axis control. So you have five left and five right can be split with independent left and independent right outputs. You also have an all outputs, which encompasses the entire controller. You can see right now we're scanning it, so we're sending it an LFO and that's scanning up and down the keyboard, sort of jumping around a little bit. You can also program in a monophonic sequence. You can do a duophonic sequence with it. You can do a monophonic sequence and then use the second side for an offset or a tap tempo. We wanted to add as many features in it without adding any menus or complex interactions as possible. Because when I perform live, I perform in the dark mostly, so I needed to be able to get in and feel my way around and know that I'm interacting with the synthesizer without really having to menu dive or really have to figure out what's going on. So the, everything about this controller is about instant feedback and instantly reacting to what you want it to do.